Compilations were not a regular thing back in the 8 and 16-bit days. Oh, you had them, of course, but they were few and far between, and were often reserved for smaller titles that did not require huge cartridges. The first time I saw a compilation on the Genesis, it came in the form of the Triple Score, an 8 megabit release by Sega in 1993. It came with Columns, World Championship Soccer, and Super Hang-On. This set the stage for more compilations in the following years. The six-pack was loaded with great games, and Europe saw multiple compilations based on the same thinking. Sega even had a Disney collection there that included Castle of Illusion and Quackshot, a great value if there's ever been one. But lurking in the shadows was another option I had not paid much attention to, known as Action 52. It was easy enough to miss because it was unlicensed and most US retailers did not carry it. In fact, what I did see of it, it was sold in magazine mail order advertisements for crazy amounts of money. The company that published it, Active Enterprises, had done a similar compilation on the NES, a critically panned and notoriously bad group of games that had earned a reputation even among those that had never played it. The Genesis version had been developed by Farsight Technologies, the same company Sega used to make sports games like NFL 95 and NBA Action 95. Surely this would mean that the compilation would be full of decent games, well worth playing, right? Before we begin, it's important to note that I come into this review with very little to no experience with this or its NES counterpart. I've never really played either of them to any degree, and have only seen gameplay snippets in a few videos I've watched over the years. Outside of hearing the secondhand accounts of friends and acquaintances, I really didn't know much about it. And with that, I went in with no expectations and gave this an honest to god chance to impress me. In this episode, we will be taking a look at Action 52 for the Sega Genesis, and see if it lives up to its rather poor reputation. As we take a look at the available offerings, the first thing to note is the fact that the games are color-coded. Yellow is for expert level games, purple is for intermediate, green is for beginning, blue is for two-player only contests, and finally white is for what is labeled as special. Scrolling through the options, it appears there are legitimately 52 unique games here, plus two more options that allow you to listen to the game's music and a randomizer feature that picks a game for you. We have a ton of games to go over, so let's get right to it. The first game on the list is Bonkers, a puzzle game that has you busting colored blocks. This offers up the twist of needing to change the color of your ball to break the same color in the play area. There are also keys that need to be used to open certain blocks. It becomes really challenging really fast and honestly becomes a chore in the process. It's not bad, but not particularly good either. Dark Sign plays like asteroids, but the tight quarters makes it frustrating right from the get-go. The momentum-based physics punish you for every move. You are either running into walls or enemy fire constantly. Some stages have gravity acting on you that makes it even more unplayable. I appreciate the attempt at deeper gameplay, but this effort just comes off as more trouble than it's worth. Dino Tennis is a two-player only game that has you hitting a ball back and forth similar to Pong. First one to nine wins. It's simple and something you can play with your kids. Ooze attempts to bring action platforming to the lineup, and boy does it fail hard. The base gameplay of shooting and jumping are functional enough, but the terrible hit detection and the fact you can't shoot and jump at the same time really hammer the fun. Each death means starting at the beginning of the stage, which means you won't be playing it for very long. Starball here looked like it'd be a winner until the ball started going through the flippers. A simple game of pinball that should have been one of the easier titles to get right is utterly ruined by broken physics and awful hit detection. You can't enjoy something that cheats constantly. I was excited when I started up Sidewinder, a game that doesn't look too dissimilar to Afterburner. The goal here is to shoot down enemy planes and avoid their missiles. 
The gameplay here is super simple, amounting to little more than using your crosshairs to shoot down the enemy planes. This is playable for a few stages before the missiles become crazy fast and start catching you at every turn. Simplicity is this game's greatest flaw. I had to chuckle at old Daytona here. It actually scrolls fairly well, but the gameplay is little more than going around tiny tracks and avoiding the same cars endlessly. There are no indicators for placement during gameplay, and touching anything is an immediate reset. It definitely lacks any real play value beyond its visuals, and once you get tired of that, Daytona has pretty much shown you all it has. 15 Puzzle is a sliding numbers game that is definitely one of the better titles here. It's simple and challenging. Align the numbers in the proper order before the timer runs out. Once you solve it, you'll never play it again, but it's better than most of the other offerings by a mile. Ever had the desire to sketch out pictures with an inaccurate digital directional pad? Yeah, me either, but that's exactly what Sketch here has you doing. With no way to save and no way to transfer your work, what's the point? Star Duel reminds me of combat for the Atari 2600. This two-player only game has you blasting each other with asteroid-style gameplay. Good thing here is, is that you don't blow up when you hit the edges of the screen. Another simple concept that is actually rather fun. Haunted Hill is a platformer with a terribly limited attack and some really lame environments. It's even worse than the ooze. Alfredo has a little chef guy collecting ingredients popping out of a giant pot. You need to avoid the wrong ingredients, but you don't know what those are until you get one and lose a life. I wish I could tell you that there was more to it, but it's not. Collect enough and move to the next stage. That's all there is to it. The Cheetah Men had all the things it needed to be an awesome game. Well, except for the good graphics, decent gameplay, and any kind of real fun factor. Your mission is to rescue caged kittens hitting around the play area, but the piss poor enemy placement and the way the screen scrolls see you taking deaths constantly. You literally need to play through the levels at a snail's pace to get anywhere. Your attack is worthless too, just awful all the way around. Skirmish is a two player only strategy game that has its moments, but ultimately is just too damn boring to hold your attention for long. You basically have no idea which units are effective until you try them all, leaving the first few games pure torture. By the time you start to understand it, you're done with it. You might get some mileage out of it with your kids. Depth Charge is exactly what you'd expect. Guide your ship along and destroy subs while avoiding their attacks. While simple and lacking any real replay value, it does play better than you'd expect. Among this lot, it's easily one of the better titles, even if you only play it once. Mind's Eye is just a rebadged Minesweeper. Plays the same and mostly looks the same. Find the bombs without blowing yourself up. Honestly, it's not really that bad. Alien Attack here is what you'd get if Contra had been one of the worst games ever made. Kill enemies that run back and forth across the screen for no reason. Your shots are weak, and the graphics are terrible. I lasted about 30 seconds here before running for the reset button. Billy Bob is a gun game that has you shooting down bad guys before they get you. Again, it's simple, but it's similar to so many other games of its type, you'll feel right at home. Like most of the offerings here, the stage and enemy graphics never really change, so the repetition is unreal. Another one you'll play for a few minutes and move on. Sharks has you shooting the same sharks underwater with your spear gun on an endless loop. Nothing changes, nothing new shows up, just one long stage of never-ending boredom. A few different enemies could have gone a long, long way. Knockout is a boxing game that can be played only by two players. There is one single punch animation and both boxers look exactly the same. Hilariously, there is a jump button here for some reason. It's absolutely terrible. Intruder is a maze game where touching the walls is an instant death. You can shoot enemies if they get in your way, but they just walk through the walls and come at angles where you can't get to them. Most of your deaths will come from this and it gets tiresome fast. 
Add in the constant backtracking and slow movement, and this is something you'll never touch a second time. Echo is a ripoff of Simon Says. You have to repeat the patterns as they are shown to you. It holds your attention for about 60 seconds. Freeway is a halfway decent Frogger ripoff where you must retrieve items from one side of the road and bring them back to the other. It has the same problems as the other games here due to the lack of things changing as you play, but the core is really accessible for younger gamers. Mousetrap has you collecting cheese and avoiding cats. It's actually easy to play and doesn't have any outstanding technical issues to speak of. Its biggest flaw is repetition, a reoccurring theme in all of these games. You just get incredibly tired of doing the same thing over and over. The simplicity is unreal. When Ninja started up, I was sure this was going to be the best game on the list. It looks good, kinda like a Sega Master System card game, but alas, repetition strikes again. Everything looks the same and the same enemies run across the screen with no AI to help them in their quest. I got to the point where I just kept jumping around them because they couldn't do anything. This had the building blocks of something playable, but in the end, it fails on every level. The repetition train just keeps on chugging with slalom. Ski downhill to avoid trees. Yep, there's nothing else here. Just keep on skiing, man. The feeling is really starting to set in that these games are starting to be clones of one another. I mean, you are either avoiding something or shooting something in the simplest of terms. I have a feeling there will be a lot more games like this coming my way. Yep, just as I expected, Dauntless here is another shoot 'em up where you are just blowing planes out of the sky randomly. It's made much worse by the fact that a cloud layer is blocking the bullets, so you have no idea when there is something about to hit you. Just an awful throwaway experience you'll quickly turn off. With Force 1, you are back to shooting enemies again, this time in space. These poor ships don't even fire back. It's just a slaughter from the get-go. Another cookie-cutter shooter with no changes to the gameplay mechanics. Remember that game I covered a few minutes ago called Mousetrap? Well, here is its reskin, Spidey. Instead of collecting cheese, you collect flies. It plays nearly identical. At this point, it's pretty clear that Action 52 is actually a complete ripoff because you aren't getting 52 unique games. Many of these are reskins of one another, and I have no doubt I'll be seeing a ton more. In Appleseed, you catch red apples that fall from trees while avoiding the green ones. That's it. No changes, no new stages, just one game board to keep doing the same thing over and over. It's basically the exact same concept as the Alfredo game we covered earlier. In Street Skater, there has clearly been some sort of cat apocalypse that has seen all the cats in the world slaughtered in the roads across America. For some reason, this intrigues you, and you must skateboard down the road to see it all. No real gameplay to speak of, just avoid the obstacles as the road keeps on going. Sunday Driver is an appropriately named game where you just drive down the road, avoiding the other cars. It's basically the vertical edition of what we just went over in Street Skater, just without all the dead cats. Star Evil has you attacking a construction site in space while the lowly workers are crushed beneath your mighty ship. One level, over and over, against enemies that just pop out at random with no offensive capabilities. It's absolutely terrible. Air Command is another reskin with you shooting down planes that don't fight back. Just avoid the ones you can't get to, and this garbage basically plays itself. Shootout reminds me of the old Sega arcade game Carnival. Various animals pass by and you need to end their miserable existence. You know, for fun. You can't really die here. Your only limitation is ammo, but all you need to do is wait for the animals to cross the first row and it's impossible to miss. Good wholesome fun for about 9 seconds. I genuinely had to laugh at old bombs away here. Apparently, this lone soldier is so important to kill, the enemy has decided to launch everything it has at him. Your job is to avoid those bombs. But not with a gun or laser to help you defend yourself, oh no. Here you have only a jump. That's right, a jump. So in order to help avoid the bombs falling above you, 
you have a freaking jump. In the world of Action 52, this apparently makes perfect sense. Remember Slalom a while back? Well, here's another vertical avoid the obstacle game, this time called Speedboat. Again, one stage, the same obstacles repeated constantly, and no gameplay other than don't hit anything. If you really took the games and broke them down by reskins and reused mechanics, this would actually be called Action 12. Dead Ant takes the notion of past games and completely reverses it. Instead of enemies that don't fight back here, you have enemies that you can't kill at all. Shoot what you can and run from the rest. On a single screen no less. What a concept. G-Fighter puts us back in a ship shooting enemies again. This time they shoot back and even better, come up from behind you constantly. With no way to attack backwards, this mess gets tiresome quickly. I also noticed that it reuses assets from some of the previous games. Man at Arms reminds me of a reverse game ground. You must defend your castle from soldiers and monsters trying to break in. It's really simple, but actually not awful aside from the horrendous repetition. Norman is a single screen tank shooter where running into foot soldiers can kill you. Yep, these must be terminators or something. This is zero fun to play because you can't shoot diagonally. This makes lining up shots a chore, and as it gets harder, death comes quick and merciless. Armor Battle takes the assets of Norman and makes it a two player dogfight. Your tank can take nine hits before it explodes. Again, if you have a very young kid, maybe this has a few minutes of gameplay worth your time. In Magic Bean, you must climb and avoid the falling items. That's it, nothing to collect, no attacks of any kind, and get this, once you get to the top, the next level has you doing it all over again. You know, because the last trip up the beanstalk wasn't enough. Utter repetitive drivel and nothing more. Apache has us once again killing enemies without any offense. Your biggest worry here is hitting the rocks that for some reason are so high you can't avoid them. Really, you don't have to shoot anything at all to finish it. Mousetrap and Spidey get another reskin with Paratrooper. This time there are walls and the ability to shoot to make things more challenging, but it's otherwise the exact same concept and mechanics at play. Collecting items, avoiding enemies, and shooting makes this one one of the deeper games in this compilation. So remember Bombs Away a while back? Well here's the same graphics engine in a game called Sky Avenger. Instead of running right and avoiding bombs, you are flying a helicopter shooting down enemies. This literally could have been the second stage to Bombs Away, had it been a fully featured title. Instead, the developers try and make their 52 game quota by making it seem you are getting all these unique experiences. What a joke. Sharpshooter takes the idea behind some of the earlier shooting efforts and gives the animals free roam of the playfield. But now you have unlimited bullets, so you can just spray the entire area without any penalties. These poor critters never stood a chance. At first, Meteor has a missile command vibe to it. Save your city from the falling rocks in the night sky, right? Nope, that has me giving it way too much credit. Here you don't have to really do anything other than avoid the falling meteors. It doesn't really matter how many hit the city, just so long as they don't hit you. The always on rapid fire assures you'll never die. Heck, you don't even have to move if you don't want to. So remember Norman, that single screen tank shooter where you couldn't shoot diagonally? Well here is Black Hole, the space version where you can only shoot in one direction. The screen randomly scrolls in every direction while defenseless ships are blown away. Yep, you gotta be the bad guy here. Apparently you are some douchebag psychopath that enjoys killing space travelers for the hell of it. Good times indeed. 
The boss is a single screen game where you must collect cash and avoid the enemies. Best part is, is that you can even attack. This might have been fun for a minute if getting on and off the ladders hadn't been such a pain. You also have to deal with the awful hit detection. Combined with the usual repetitive issues that all these games suffer, and it's another one you'll play once and never touch again. Level 1 First game is literally just that, it's Pong in all its black and white glory. It's also two player only. Despite what you might think, this is the best game on the entire cartridge. Yes, it's simple, but it's from an era where game development was young and exciting. It's the only game on Action 52 that has any excuse being as simple as it is. The last game is simply called Challenge, but it's not a game at all. It's actually just a string of random games from the cartridge on their hardest settings. Survive one and move on to the next. So again, Action 52 is a completely deceptive title, which I admit comes as no surprise at all at this point. What can I say here that you didn't already know? Some of these are playable, but they are so simple and repetitive you have no reason at all to play them a second time. They reminded me of the games that were around during the Atari 2600 days. In fact, aside from maybe some more color and sprite detail, many of these look like they belong on an old Atari. That leaves me with a final recommendation of avoiding this with every fiber of your being. As seasoned gamers, Action 52 offers the majority of you absolutely nothing. The repetition is absolute, the simplicity is soul crushing, and without a word of pretense or hyperbole, it's one of the most worthless additions to the Sega Genesis library I have ever encountered. I have not had this much trouble playing a game for a review in all my days as Sega Lord X. You'll also be hard pressed to find media coverage of this back then, as most publications seem to avoid it like the plague. I did find an old GamePro review that absolutely annihilated it and made no illusions about its worth. Perhaps the most sickening part is, is that this thing cost a fortune back then. I was able to find multiple magazine ads with a $100 price point and then an extra $20 to ship it. Shockingly, collectors will pay a pretty penny for this thing today, proving yet again the insanity of the modern retro market knows no shame at all. I can only really recommend you try this if you have extremely young kids who are just getting into the hobby. The simple mechanics would be easy for them to pick up, but even then there are so many titles out there that are so much better and just as accessible. I came into this review ready to give it a fair chance, but after a few hours of gameplay, I concede that this is easily and unmistakably every bit as bad as you have heard. I'm Sigalord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.